Ghost Drive is essentially Google Drive or Dropbox. Uh, it's like a decentralized data storage protocol. So it's a decentralized Dropbox or Google Drive on the blockchain, uh, utilizing artificial intelligence and quantum resistant encryption, and even what's known as quantum blockchains as well, um, to be able to allow you to have 100% privacy and own your own data. And we're creating the world's first decentralized data exchange. It's never been done. Um, there's people, you know, that, um, you know, they create exchanges like these decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges or the stock market. You know, my other friend, Ron Klein, which is a mutual friend of ours, you know, Greg and everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, he created the New York Stock Exchange and all this stuff. So, um, but the crazy thing is, and then we were telling him about our project and he actually really likes it a lot too. Even Steve Wozniak, you know, endorsed our project. Come on. Um, you know, via email privately, of course, but um, he's just a busy guy. He's got a lot of stuff going on. He really likes the project a lot. He says we should keep going and he sure we'll be successful. And I think we will too. Totally. Um, but, but anyway, so it's a decentralized data storage protocol that allows you to own your own data and even sell your own data if you want to on the world's first uh, open market for such things. And so it's called Data Dex. It's um, about to be released. And so anyway, we've got, you know, some amazing people on our team, like the former CEO for Warren Buffett, Steve Rogers. We've got Tim Huckabee, who created the blockchain for Microsoft. We have the United Nations Advisors for Artificial Intelligence and the guys that created Watson for IBM, you know, like Neil Sohoto. So we just have the, the really the um, meeting of the minds, essentially. And that's what Napoleon Hill talks about in his mastermind concept. He said, when two or more minds get together, it thereby creates an invisible, intangible third mind called the mastermind. If you've been looking for the perfect t-shirt line, Inspired Tees Co. has you covered. They offer a line of awesome Christian and American-themed tees for the whole family. Whether you want cool t-shirts that express who you are or want to spread awareness with shirts like their new breast cancer tee, they have something for everyone. You can also shop their Military Veterans American Tees, and with every purchase from that collection, they're going to donate 15% of the profits to the Wounded Warrior Project. Make sure to visit their website, inspiredteesco.myshopify.com. Joshua Earp is an American entrepreneur, investor, keynote speaker, musician, and actor that has been featured on ABC, Fox, CBS, NBS, Netflix, Showtime, Hulu, FX, Amazon Studios, and more. He and his team are credited with handling the marketing and publicity for The Bay, a show which has won 15 Emmys, and he regularly speaks at the largest business events in the world, according to Forbes, Inc. 500, an entrepreneur with Steve Wozniak and Edward Snowden, all the way down to Buzz Aldrin. Joshua is an advisor to billionaires, celebrities, influencers, unicorn startups, and has ran his SEO PR celebrity endorsement agency for the last 12 years. He and his team have amassed clients such as Universal Studios, Warner Brothers, Disney, City National Bank, Coca-Cola, Netflix, the Television Academy, co-owners of the Lakers, and more by cracking the search engine algorithmic code along with executing elite-level strategic partnership development, strategic business development, and revolutionary transformational digital marketing campaigns that produce an above-average return on investment based on key performance indicators. Even though Joshua's team has done the influencer marketing social media campaigns for some of the biggest celebrities and companies on earth, he originally made his first fortune through search engine optimization and then went on to successfully generate multi-million dollar deals in finance, entertainment, marketing, publicity, and technology. After having countless students worldwide through his online courses on entrepreneurship and marketing, he has advised some of the top internet business celebrities, such as Ty Lopez, who was awarded number one social media marketer by Entrepreneur Magazine, and Frank Kern, who did the first $1 million product launch online, to name a few. 
Joshua is also recognized for rewriting neuroscience as we know it with Dr. Katsushi Arisaka, the founder of the God Particle and builder of the Large Hadron Collider for his incredibly deep insight in neocortical phase integration. This publication won the Dean's Prize out of Harvard, MIT, Princeton, Humphreys, and Yale. Joshua, thank you so much for taking time, man, out of your day. I really appreciate it. I like to go back with my guests. Like, where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you? Yeah, so I grew up in Bethalto, Illinois. Okay. And, um, you know, it's like the Midwest. There's nothing around but like cornfields and churches. And the most entrepreneurial thing you could do is, you know, um, you know, start a church and start selling corn. I mean, you know, so, I, so needless to say, I got really good at technology and the internet and things like that. You know? Yeah. Man, this is, that's awesome. Like you and I, we met at Sorry, Prosperity Camp. Somebody's knocking on my door. Sorry, one second. No, that's cool. All right, man. So might have to do a little. If you want, we can redo that question or a little editing. It was just my wife coming home, so oh, you no. need to get in the front door, you know. <laughs> no problem, dude. No problem. I don't see her hanging, you know. Um, but no, yeah, yeah well, that's where I grew up, you know. And um, you know, very cool. I got well, good at technology because there was nothing else to do. Right, right. Well, and, and you and I, we met at Prosperity Camp. They're put on by Greg Reed. And you showed me some crazy good magic tricks. It, for me, I'm like, I love magic. So you were showing me cards that just like blow my mind. Like, when did you start practicing magic? And what was it about magic that made you want to learn about it? Yeah, so magic is, um, you know, magic with a K, right? And a lot of people, there's apparently, you know, white magic and black magic. And then there's like voodoo. And then there's like the performance art of magic with a C. Yeah. Um, it's like illusions. But actually back in the day, um magic with a k the ceremonial ritualistic magic right okay it can be either used for good or bad it's like having a knife right you can either use the knife to cut up vegetables to prepare you know food for your family and feed your family or yeah. you can take that same knife and, you know it's it's kind of like technology technology will, will either liberate humanity or technology will either enslave humanity yeah so that's why we're just making sure we're more on this side of the fence you know than this side um, okay. But going back to your question, speaking of magic, though, you know, advanced technology is indistinguishable from real magic. Um, but once again, though, just so, you know, our viewers are aware, you know, magic with a K is one of those things that were along the similar branches of, you know, science and things like that. Because, you know, modern day science was founded by a man by the, na the name of Rene Descartes and upon an angelic vision. So even science has its roots in uh, the occult, you know, uh, occult, O-C-C-U-L-T, coming from the Latin word occultare, which means secret or hidden. Um, you know, and once again, it's another word that people hear and they just freak out. It's like, yo, you know, read the actual definition. It just means secret <laughs> or hidden, you know? Yep. All it means. Um, but we'll get into, you know, that and predictive programming and other stuff later. But what I will say, though, is, you know, once again, you know, magic was a very serious thing to be taken very serious. Uh, it was similar to, um, it was basically went hand in hand with science at the time. Because you have to remember back during the Renaissance period and before that, they weren't just practicing science. I mean, before it was ever even called science, we had things like alchemy and astronomy and metaphysics and neuroscience. And we had all these different things going on, um, you know. And so, so, so basically, you know, I started doing magic, uh, the performance art magic. That's the only kind that I do, like illusions, yeah. basically. Um, remember I was eight years old, the same time I started playing guitar, um, right. almost actually, I just turned 30 the other day. So I'm 30 years old now in case anybody was wondering, come on, happy birthday. Thanks, man. But, uh, but basically, yeah. So, you know, and then as I got a little bit older, I started progressing into what's called mentalism, which is an ancient occult science of psychological divinatory illusion. So it's all in the mind. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, then from there. That's when I got into hypnosis. And so I'm one of the world's fastest hypnotists by utilizing what's called an instant induction 
to shock the central nervous system, trigger the amygdala, and bypass the critical faculty to implant suggestion into what is known as the subconscious mind, um, where then that suggestion is, um, you know, uh, manifested into this physical 3D reality because the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and non-reality. That's why you can have a nightmare, you're laying in bed and you wake up sweating. It's like, why are you sweating? You were just laying in bed, there's no real danger. Well, the answer is the pineal gland, which has a retina cornea and a lens, literally is our third eye that produces DMT, is activated during the sleep endogenously. And therefore we access alternate states of consciousness through the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between reality and non-reality. So that's why we wake up sweating um, you know, when we have a nightmare sometimes. So, so once you're aware of all this stuff, you know, and this is maybe why I got to the level of success that I did over time is that yeah, there are different fundamental principles and we can talk about what those are and things like that, but totally. Um, but ultimately it was that belief in the subconscious mind and knowing you can do anything and having a big enough why so that the how was easier, you know? Wow. Man, that is so good, dude. I, yeah, that stuff mentalism, hypnotism, man, magic. Yeah. So intriguing to me, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm so interested in, in the whole mindset, subconscious mind. And I don't dream very often. My wife does dream quite a bit. My kids dream quite a bit where they're like, you know, they'll wake up in the middle of the night kind of jolted and things like that. I don't remember any dreams. Very rare. Oh. Do I remember any dreams? So I don't know if that's something <laughs> weird on my end or what, dude. You drink a lot of tap water? I don't drink a lot of tap water. I I, I don't, I should probably drink more water in general, but I, I don't I, drink. Do you use fluoride in your toothpaste or do you specifically buy non-fluoride toothpaste? We specifically buy non-fluoride. Okay. Do you eat a lot of fried foods? And be honest, it's okay. We all do from time to time. Do you eat a lot of fried foods, a lot of things with flour, a lot of things like that? Yeah, it's a great question. I think probably once or twice a week do we go okay. out and, and, we, and we eat something. And we try not to like eat the fried fried foods, but yeah, but I think we're out once or twice a week for, for dinner. The reason I ask is because all of those things calcify the pineal gland. And if oh. you take a cross section of the human brain and you compare it to the eye of Horus, which is the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic, you'll begin to understand that what these ancient Egyptians were doing, which were simply early occultists influenced by the ancient Babylonians, is that they were once again accessing these alternate states of consciousness through the third eye or the pineal gland, which once again has a retina cornea and a lens. So it literally is our third eye. I mean, if I were to ask you right now to close your eyes. So for instance, let's do an experiment. Just close your okay. eyes for like five seconds. Okay, I'll okay. Tell you what okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to envision a blue car. Okay. okay, can you see the blue car in your mind? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now you can go ahead and open your eyes. It's a very simple experiment. Um, so how can we see something, right? Like the blue car in this case, if our eyes are closed, and the answer is because of that literally is our third eye, um, you know? So, you know, that's why the Buddhists wear like the pine cone hair and it's all symbolic of the pine cone, which you'll see in the Vatican, big statues of the pine cone out yeah. on display. And this is, these are all secrets from the ancients that they utilized to access not just altered states of consciousness, but to access ancient knowledge from past cultures and you know, would basically enable them to develop the technology that they've developed in order to build, say, the pyramids or et cetera. And they left clues, you know, it's not just in business. Like Jim Rohn always says, success leaves clues. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, you know, when we research the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and we see the all seeing eye or the eye of Horus, you know, and we compare that with the cross section of the human brain that looks identical to the pineal gland, then we start to understand, you know, what they might have been telling us because DMT is you know has been described in a coded language for thousands of years regarding the, re the removal of the spirit from the body mm. um, so i just wanted to throw that out there you know oh I th dude that, that's amazing dude <laughs> thanks for doing that experience that experiment man. i love that stuff man i'm so intrigued by it and i know a lot of the listeners that i have for my show are, are going to really connect with that, man. So that's awesome. Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by Tranquil Turtle Massage. Tracy over there, the founder, she's a small town girl from Montana, loves God, loves her family, loves her friends, loves working out, fishing and camping. She has a passion for helping those in need and enjoys being creative with woodworking, crocheting, healthy baking, 
pottery and cooking. Look, she began her massage journey back in 2010 where she graduated from massage school up in Anchorage, Alaska. She specializes in her signature massages, the Hanu Infusion and the Hanu Ashiatsu, as well as the Gua Sha and Manual Lymphatic Drainage. If you're looking for a massage specialist and someone who could get you feeling good, go see Tracy down at Tranquil Turtle Massage. And while you're there, check out CDA Microblading, offering Coeur d'Alene's best tattoo brows, plasma fibroblast, tightening, and PMU services right there in the heart of downtown Coeur d'Alene. Make sure you book your appointment at pnwmobilemassage.com. One thing I wanted to jump over, though, is you have your own SEO company. You've had it for about uh, probably 12 or longer years. And you have been, I've seen online, like people call you the SEO genius. Like, I mean, you know exactly what you're doing. Like when it comes to SEO, what, what are some tips? And I, I lack in that skill of SEO. I'm really bad at that. And I would think the majority of people out there that start up businesses don't have an idea what they're doing, but what, what are some of those quick tips or maybe that people are lacking that they need to be doing to kind of increase that SEO? That's a great question. Um, you know, I started out doing SEO as an advisor pretty much for presidential cabinets when I was 21 years old. And, yeah. And, but, um, but I was helping do it for like their side businesses, you know, like, uh, like online gambling and stuff, you know? So like, <laughs> so like I literally just got thrown into the, the freaking pit, you know, and yeah. um, had to fend for myself. And, you know, I did have an unlimited amount of money, you know, that they gave me to throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks and what doesn't, you know? Yeah. If it weren't for them financing my education and financing, you know, my experimentation, which Thomas Edison said, he who experiments the most wins, you know, I would have probably never been where I'm at now today. So um, right. although I don't really necessarily buy into the illusion of bipartisan politics and nor do I believe that, um, you know, some election is going to change anything. What I what I really think is that, um, you know, and then I can tell you more into that story. That, if that's a specific question, we can go into that whole thing later, like how I got started and everything. But yeah, just yeah. Question, but just to answer your question, I, I just wanted you guys to know that I've, I was forced to adapt to a highly competitive environment from day one. It's not like I had the training wheels on and was just, you know, slowly, slowly learning. I was just, you know, Godspeed basically to the, to the, uh, the end of the light at the end of the tunnel. But anyway, so search engine optimization, what I always do is we reverse engineer Google's patents. So you can actually go to patents.google.com. They'll 301 redirect, redirect you to like a URL, like google.com slash patents. And you can reverse engineer their patents and read what they're coding in their algorithm, you know? And if you're really good at math and, and you're really good at reverse engineering, you know, that type of stuff, then you can be really successful. So that's kind of like the first pillar, right? Mm. Um, the second pillar is, once again, like Thomas Edison said, I was bound to succeed because I simply ran out of ways that wouldn't work. And so what we do is once we reverse engineer the patents, which I gave you the URL to do that, then what you do is you then um, begin scientifically A-B split testing and isolating variables when it comes to your backlinking to determine what is the best way to rank the website. So in order to do that, for instance, you have on-page optimization, then you have off-page optimization. So on-page optimization is, you know, the things that you're responsible for on your website. So these include things like URLs, domain name, titles, keyword density, on-site, off-site, et cetera. Um, and then you have backlinking, which is, you know, basically one website linking to your website, right? And so on and so forth, one-to-one -one connections, right? So, you know, that's essentially how the SEO works. And so, you know, just to have a great tip that someone can take away, I love using a tool called semrush.com. Okay. So semrush, like M as in mother, semrush.com. And what it allows you to do is put in your own website, and then it gives you this whole diagnostic report that says, these are all the things that are wrong with your website. Um, and these, these are the keywords you're ranking for that are maybe on page two and three that, are, that have what's known as uh, transactional intention and high search volume. Those are the two things we look for when we do our keyword analysis. And we do what's called the identification of opportunity through gap analysis. And all that means is we simply see, once again, what we go through the report and we sort the the keywords from highest to lowest in terms of not just transactional intention, but once again, search volume. And then what we do is we build a unique landing page. If we don't already have one optimized for each individual keyword. So if you're trying to sell cars in Detroit and you don't have a, a page on your website about, 
cars in Detroit, then what are the chances are you're going to rank for it, right? So probably not, you know? So like, for instance, like if you have a podcast, right? And it's, let's say, you know, you've contacted or contracted my agency to help you rank for, say, best podcast in the world, right? Well, if you don't have a, a page, even if you are the best podcast in the world, if you don't, the way the algorithm works, if you don't have a page that specifically says in the title and URL, best podcasts in the world without anything in between it or anything like that and a whole page dedicated to that topic and a whole you know thing um like article and everything else then you're not going to rank for it no matter what you know so so you step number one is if you want to rank for a keyword you have to at least have a page on your website optimized for that specific keyword um so that that's number one and the way you optimize that so so really i just use scm rush to figure out what all the best keywords are. I'll even put in my competitor's URL into SEMrush and then see what their best keywords are. And then mm-hmm. cherry pick the best ones from them that are already proven to work and bring in sales. And I simply build out landing pages on my website or my client's website for the same keywords. And then I just outdo them on the back end. And then it ranks them above, you know, I'm ranking above Walmart, Amazon, all this stuff. I mean, it's crazy. That's awesome. So awesome, dude. Well, I, dude, I also wanted to talk about your journey. Like, I mean, how did you get to, you know, from cornfields to what you're doing today in the Hollywood and music ah. industry, man, like that's a big jump. And I think a lot of people like they, they think of this and like, I want to do this, but then they never take the action to do so. You've proven the fact that you can do that. You took the action to make it there. And now, I mean, very successful entrepreneur, investor, and all of this amazing list of stuff you've been able to do. What's that journey been yeah. like, man? You know, and at the end of the day, like all that stuff is just, you know, words, right? But yeah, really it's about just being a good person and just helping other people, man, you know, and as a result of me being a good person and doing the right thing and helping as many people as I can, all this other stuff is happening, you know, like when you read my bio, like that's just the result of the person that we become. And yep. so, you know, and so my message to everybody is like, you know, Jim Rohn had this thing, you know, it's like a slogan, you know, farm boy from Idaho makes it to Beverly Hills. Totally. Kind of like the same story, but obviously I'm nowhere compared to Jim Rohn when he's done, you know. But uh, but going back to your question, the movie, the music industry. So so I just wrote a song with Scooter Braun's new artist. His name's Baby Jake. Scooter manages Justin Bieber, Kanye West, and uh, Ariana Grande. In fact, I've actually got my guitar right here. I can play you one riff for five seconds if you want to hear. Come on, man, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just in my office. And I got my guitar right here. I'll just play the riff real quick. Dude, it's yeah. amazing. <laughs> it goes like this. This is the song that I wrote. It goes. one that's one of the riffs <laughs> bro that was amazing man <laughs> i'm pumped to hear that Thanks, man. man dude i've been playing, bro, i've been playing for 20 years man i'm only 30 years old i've been playing actually shit man i'm starting to feel old i've been playing you know yeah you know, oh man yeah. so, i was looking through ghost drive website and you and i talked about this when i heard you you and roman talk about this at prosperity camp man my mind was blown about what this can do. But for those who don't know what about Ghost Drive yet, like what is it and what can it do, man? Yeah, great, great thing to uh, ask about. So Ghost Drive is essentially Google Drive or Dropbox. Uh, it's like a decentralized data storage protocol. So it's a decentralized Dropbox or Google Drive on the blockchain, uh, utilizing artificial intelligence and quantum resistant encryption and even what's known as quantum blockchains as well. Um, to be able to allow you to have 100% privacy and own your own data. And we're creating the world's first decentralized data exchange. It's never been done. Um, there's people, you know, that, um, you know, they create exchanges like these decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges or the stock market. You know, my other friend, Ron Klein, which is a mutual friend of ours, you know, Greg and everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, he created the New York Stock Exchange and all this stuff. So, um, but the crazy thing is, and then we were telling him about our project, and he actually really likes it a lot too. Even Steve Wozniak, you know, endorsed our project. Come on. Um, you know, via email, privately, of course. But um, 
he's he's just a busy guy. He's got a lot of stuff going on. But he really likes the project a lot. He says we should keep going, and I'm sure we'll be successful. And I think we will too. Totally. Um, but but anyway, so it's a decentralized data storage protocol that allows you to own your own data and even sell your own data if you want to on the world's first uh, open market for such things. And so it's called Data Dex. It's um, about to be released. And so anyway, we've got. You know, some amazing people on our team, like the former CEO for Warren Buffett, Steve Rogers. We got Tim Huckabee, who created the blockchain for Microsoft. We have United Nations advisors for artificial intelligence and the guys that created Watson for IBM, you know, like Neil Sohoto. So we just have the, the really the um, meeting of the minds, essentially. And that's what Napoleon Hill talks about in his mastermind concept. He said, when two or more minds get together, it thereby creates an invisible, intangible third mind called the mastermind. And so that's why like you and I here or anybody else, you know, two or more minds get together. That's why if you, you know, if you ever think back, has there ever been a time where, um, you know, you're just talking to someone and all these ideas are just downloaded into your head and you're like, whoa, where's all this data coming from? Like, yeah, I don't know where it's coming from. That's the mastermind principle at work. And so we have that going on, but we also have a tech stack. Our buddy has a patent for a projector screen built inside the cell phone. And he's going to be one of the only smartphone manufacturers in the United States of America. So we're partnering with him. So we have our own smartphone with a projector built into it with the cyber security and the um, decentralized data storage protocol, which we also interface with IPFS, which is the new internet. It's a decentralized internet. And on top of that, we're using also patented 3D Wi-Fi technology. So Ghost Drive is built into the phone. So that's one of our tech stacks right now. But um but yeah, we've really got a lot of amazing stuff going on. It's an amazing team. And, um, you know, we got some amazing people involved. And we're really helping solve a very big problem. One of the biggest problems on the internet. It, it blows my mind about what you guys got going on. And I love, like, when I was doing research on, on your website there, you stayed on there that Ghost Drive started in 2017. The release date is until 2022. So that's five years and I think that people go, oh man, that company, they just like overnight success and they don't realize how much work actually goes into this thing, man. Oh, man. You know, how did Ghost Drive come together? Like, I mean, like what was, how did you get the team, the Ghost team together and things like that? Yeah. Well, I got approached by Ghost Drive to be the CEO, you know, okay. due to the, you know, the amount of value I bring, you know, to the totally. Table. You know, in terms of strategic partnership development, in terms of um, standard operating procedures, in terms of, you know, all the other stuff um, with marketing and, and all the other cool stuff that we do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the reason they developed it initially is because of the fact that, um, number one, it's just the biggest problem out there, but there's all these other ideas that we have and all these other apps and things that we're releasing to the world. And unless they're 100% secure, then people aren't going to trust them. And there wasn't a security protocol on the market that fit all the needs and checked all the boxes of all the criteria that we needed to be truly decentralized and truly anonymous. And so therefore, you know, we set out to create Ghost Drive and uh, as the security layer protocol that everything else is built on, you know? Come on. It, <laughs> dude, it's so good. Dude, there's so much stuff, man. I, I love this conversation. Dude, there's so much good stuff here. It's ghostdrive.com, right? Yeah, exactly. And okay. um, also, my Instagram is just um, at Joshua.earp. So you guys can follow me there and whatnot. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, we're just glad to have, you know, smart, cool people like you along on the journey, man, because, you know, what you do is very important, you know, and not just your business and your everyday life, but also just on the podcast and helping spread the light and uh, illuminate the world. You know, I always tell people that, you know, if our, if we have a perfect flame on top of our torch we can go and light everybody else's torch without diminishing our own flame yeah, yeah. so the more people adopt that mentality the more they realize the more that they give the more they receive then i think we'll be in a better place man oh yes dude absolutely joshua it's such an honor to have you on my show man it was so good to talk with you again and looking forward to seeing you again man and really appreciate taking the time man out of your busy schedule to jump on man really appreciate it oh man it's all good brother i just pretend to be busy <laughs> um, but thank you. I really, really appreciate it. And what's going on? Thank you so much for watching the show. I really appreciate it. Hey, I just wanted to do a quick introduction. If you've not seen my show or you don't know the services that I offer, I wanted to drop them to you right now. One, I do voiceover work. So if you're looking for a voiceover a person to cover your motivational videos, or maybe it's Kickstarter videos or whatever it is, let me know. I'm more than happy to help you out there. 
I also work with brands on brand and product videos. So they'll send me their products to do reviews or box openings. Let me know. I'd love to work with you on your product as well and hope you get that product out there. I also love to be able to share my story. So if I can make an impact on one person at your next speaking engagement, let me know. I love to talk about my story. I love to talk about how our past does not define our future and morning routines and being consistent, how to be around those successful people that are just going to lift you up. Let's chat about having me speak at your next event. Let's make it happen. Again, thank you so much for checking out this show. Check out ericgallonmedia.com. Really appreciate your time. Have an awesome day.